Welcome to the Daily BA, my name is Ryan O. My name is Ryan O. I bring you Monday through Friday content for behavior analysts by a behavior analyst. Thanks for tuning in. This week, we are doing a bit of a follow-up on an episode that I already shot. It's gonna be linked somewhere right up about here. And I asked you specifically what you thought about my short, quick overview of three different books by B.F. Skinner himself. Now, one of those we're gonna jump into a little bit more today. First of all, I'm gonna get into my opinions, then we're gonna jump into what you had to say, and I'll provide some answers as well, or at least commentary in addition to. So, here we go. Science and Human Behavior. Some people say is the book, if there's one book, to really comprehensively understanding Skinner's approach to behavior, this would be it. Now, in my opinion, it is crucial that you read it. It is one of the pillars of the foundation of our science. That said, it's also slightly outdated because it was written in 1953. Now, in the book, Skinner is very data-based and there is data backing these sort of claims. So it's not that this stuff is no longer true, it's just that there's been a lot of advances on the field since then. However, the amount of work that went into this was decades of work and research, and you don't see that so often in our field. So some of the things I liked about the book, first of all, you get to read and understand how Skinner saw the world when it came to 1953 after a couple dozen years of researching this sort of topic. That's really cool in and of itself. Now, one thing that's a little bit different, Javi, you look down here real quick, is do you find anything that has to do with motivation, or as we commonly talk about now in the Fortune contingency, establishing operations and abolishing operations? Still looking? How about on this page? Interesting, right? And so this is prior to the four-term contingency. However, that doesn't mean that he doesn't still talk about those sort of things. Now, one other thing that I really love about this book is there's such a broad range of topics. Scanning here like we did earlier, you'll notice there's everything from reflexes, operant behavior, shaping, emotion, deprivation, satiation, self-control, something that we're all very interested in to some sort of degree. Thinking there's a whole chapter on the self, pretty cool and the larger implications of what this would actually mean when we're talking about a cultural level of analysis. And you don't find that everywhere. And so it's really good at providing a broad overview of all of these topics. It gets you very interested in a possibility of an entire science of behavior. And that's the whole thing that he posits in the first section of this book itself. Now, if I could have one thing, it's that this is a must read. If you're not reading this as a certified behavior analyst, you're missing out on a very crucial section of our field and history of our field. Now we talked about this could be a little bit tricky to push through, so some common suggestions with it is read it with a group of people that are at or around your skill sets or even higher, take your questions that you get when you push through these chapters and bring them to that group and bring them to that mentor. They can help you out. The internet is a fantastic thing. You can find people all over the place that'll help you out with these sort of things. Now, I also asked each of you what it was that you liked or disliked about this book, if you had any suggestions, if there's anything that I missed, and I want to go through those now. All right, here we go. So first comment was, Jay Bowker. Two were required readings of my program. I'm a huge Skinner fan. Portrait tat coming soon. Great vid, Ryan. That's awesome. Looking forward to the tattoo. Uh, as long as it's an appropriate one to show, drop it in there. Now the next one was from Lydia, and she wrote, Lena Skinner's core works were required reading in my grad program, and I have the additional disadvantage of having gotten my bachelor's in a completely different field. I would say, I don't know if it's necessarily a disadvantage, different uh, histories coming together could be really, really cool. Skinner actually had a background in uh, English prior to coming into behavior analysis, so remember that. And then one more related comment by Destination Humanity is that, uh, is that they have read these from cover to cover, however, they were not required readings in the program. Now, they were referring to uh, the three-pack originally, that video. As for science and human behavior, it was a required reading in my program. Looks like that varies from program to program these days. And I know some people are very concerned about that. Others don't see as much of an issue. I'm really curious what you have to think and say about that. So let me know below. Now, we had two really cool comments. First from Brady Phelps saying, Science and human behavior is a great read. So much relevant information. I, I could not agree more. 
at all. And the next one was from Dave Palmer. I remember he was commenting on all three books I selected and he said, Excellent choices. I can think of no better exercise for a behavior analyst than rereading science and human behavior periodically. In 2016, the B.F. Skinner Foundation published a quote of the day from the book, and it was astonishing how rich the book was in shrewd observations. And again, I agree. It's really cool to follow those sort of things along like the Skinner Foundation has done. Now, I know that they still publish these sort of things in Skinner's quote of the day on Facebook as well as on a Twitter handle. Now, I also reach out to the Teaching Behavior Analysis listserv, mentioned that in a, a video on the forums and such. The guy Bruce wrote saying we should check them all out in their entirety, including signs and human behavior. And this is a, a common feel that we also had on a YouTube comment by Carl Binder saying that they're all relevant. And he also listed some other things to go check out as well. I'm gonna leave this here, so if you wanna check that screenshot out, you can go dig. It's also in the original video on Skinner 3-Pack. Now, Brady Phelps also commented on just how robust this, this book is, and I couldn't agree more. And for anyone interested, there were some other resources shared here by uh, Ed Morris as well, so check those out. And a last comment by Thomas Critchfield was really interesting. There's a lot here. I'm gonna leave it up. Maybe we can look at it and dive into it more in the comment section below. Essentially, it kind of conflicts a little bit. You'll see some people say that science and human behavior is like very much written for a lay audience. Um, I don't know if I agree quite so much as a, a, a lay audience in today's time. And Brady brings in the comment here of, times have changed so much since this has been published that the audience who's trying to pull in originally in this, this sort of lay category is quite different than the, the people that are probably gonna get pulled into his work nowadays. And that style might not resonate as well with our culture is at least my opinion and I think we share that. Thomas also left us some comments on how he sees uh, folks like Pat Fryman and Skinner approaching things in similar sorts of ways. Uh, albeit different times. But I think overall with this comment, I'd say fruitful, love it, Tom, thank you so much. And I totally agree that the 1950s to 2000 uh, large overall cultural changes are very relevant. And that is one of the, the kind of limitations of going back into this book is you have to kind of transport yourself back into that time and, and read it from that perspective not expecting it to have the same sort of look and feel of something like this channel or different things that we, we typically consume in today's day and age. And so that's it. Thanks for chiming in. This is Science and Human Behavior. It is one of the three packs. Um, if you have anything else below, please comment. Let me know what you like, didn't like. I'm gonna try to bring more and more of the conversation into this channel like I had mentioned. If you're into it, please subscribe, hit that uh, notification button, any of that sort of stuff, share, like. It actually makes a huge difference. Um, and with that said, uh, tomorrow should be a banger. I still have to work on that one. So hope you enjoy, and that is your Daily B.A.